Good afternoon. Welcome to Zero Days and Mitigations, Roadways to Exploit and Secure Connected BMW Cars in South Seas ABE with Zizang Tai, Michael Grufke, Heinrich Schwepper, and Wenjai Zhang. Before we begin, a few brief notes. Uh, stop by the Business Hall located in Mandalay Bay, Oceanside, and Shoreline Ballrooms on Level 2. The Black Hat Arsenal is also in the Business Hall on Level 2. Lunch will be in Bayside AB from 1 to 2.30. And don't forget the merchandise store on level 2 and the session recordings from Source of Knowledge. They are, have a desk on every level. And also, thank you for putting your phone on vibrate. It makes it easier for the rest of us to ignore the ringing while we wait for your voicemail to pick it up. Our speakers. Um, okay, um, let's start today's topic. And uh, today's topic's name is Zero Day and the Mitigations, Role Ways to Exploit and Secure Connected BMW Cars. Uh, I think today's topic will be a little bit special because we, for, uh, we have two group of person. The first person is from uh, King Security Lab. We are focused on how to find the weakness of the car. And also another part, from BMW Group and the other experts to how to secure their car. So two, to, uh, two kinds of things, and uh, we get together to uh, talk about how to secure a car. First of all, is, uh, what about us? Um, we are the researcher from the, me and the Zhixiang come from uh, Tencent King Security Lab, and uh, we are focused on the research of uh, connected car. Uh, we have the two years um, Tesla research, uh, and you must know that. And also, this year we'll give the uh, BMW research. Uh, first of all, let's talk about some of the timeline. Uh, we started research at uh, 2017. Uh, it's almost a tick as a almost a whole year to do the research because uh, one of the difficult of, uh, to do the research of BMW car is you had to reverse a lot of things. You had to understand the complex architecture of the car. So um, it spent a, 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 almost a, a one year. And then at the last year, we report the problem to, the, uh, to BMW group and uh, we get help with each other. We try to um, talk about how to fix the problem and uh, the details of everything. And finally, at the August of uh, last year, finally, uh, we can uh, let everything get be finished. That's the agenda. Uh, before start the technical topic, and uh, I want to ask a question that I really love to ask. And how many guys have BMW cars here? Well, not too many, not all of you, right? So it seems BMW has a potential market in USA, right? <laughs> so um, let's talk about the, first of all, let's talk about the vehicle components and the, the exploring chain. And I will give you a brief uh, introduction of the, how the architecture of the BMW car. First of all, the head unit. Uh, head unit is a very important part in our exploration, uh, exploration because um, we, uh, we start the research of the car, uh, we just start from the head unit. It's an infotainment system. And then we expand our research to the other components. And uh, in BMW's cars, they call it MBT head unit. And uh, it's responsible for a lot of media things. And then it, uh, uh, TCB, it's a, uh, we call it a T-box. It's a telematic uh, unit of the car. And it can do, uh, it integrate an eSIM in the, in the TCB and it can go online. It's, uh, supply the online services to the both head unit and also the TCB itself. And also, um, it, it has some telematics function we will talk about later. Then another important component is about the central gateway. Uh, the central gateway can uh, almost responsible for such things. First of all, it's about the OBD diagnostic. And then it, uh, uh, for the root, uh, to route the CAM message and the flex three messages uh, to do the uh, message transport. And also, um, it's off, uh, it gives, uh, there's a switch on the 
uh, central gateway, uh, the OBD use Ethernet and also the head unit use Ethernet. So you can diagnostic the head unit uh, through the OBD side. Then um, in our research, we almost uh, um, try to analyze this uh, almost every uh, attack surfaces in the car. For example, um, the remote uh, attack surfaces is, uh, uh, is from the TCB through the backend. There's cellular data. We, uh, and also short message, we uh, analyze this uh, attack surface. And also in the nearby attack surfaces, uh, we have the USB, Bluetooth, and also when you can, uh, uh, when you can touch the car, you can, uh, we also analyze this uh, important uh, attack surfaces, OBD2. Then let's talk about something um, of the whole uh, arch architecture of the car. Uh, as you can see, um, the head unit and the telematic box TCB, they are on the KCAM4. It's um, uh, we call it infotainment domain, and uh, you can use the OBD through the Ethernet switch uh, to the head unit, and also the central gateway is responsible for the other kinds of ECU. For example, like uh, body cam, PD cam, chassis cam, and uh, there's a lot of uh, ECU on that. So in this picture, you can see if you can uh, compromise the head unit or the TCB, uh, it's not very. Uh, at most of the time, you cannot influence the whole car because there are some domain isolation uh, based on the CAN bus and also the Ethernet. Uh, first of all, it's about, uh, about the local exploration. Uh, we can start the attack through the USB or the OBD. And then we can plant our back door to the head unit. And the head unit can send, uh, we let the head unit send CAM messages, any CAM messages to the central gateway. And finally, the central gateway help us use the, uh, help us to influence the other issues by the UDS messages. And then it's about the remote exploit chain. Uh, the remote exploit chain is the, the last parts are the same like the local exploit chain, but we, now we can start the attack through the uh, fake base station, and uh, we find some uh, vulnerabilities to uh, plant our backdoor to the TCB, and then we use the same thing to influence the other issues. And then the talk about how to root the head unit, and Zhichang will give you the talk. Okay, uh, in this part, uh, I will introduce local and remote ways to uh, load NBD head unit uh, by utilizing the uh, vulnerabilities we find in some vehicle services. Um, basically, uh, NBD head unit is comprised of two systems. The upper layer system is actually your Intel. Uh, it's mainly uh, used to uh, uh, handle multimedia functions and uh, provide online service via telematic communication box which is also known as T-Box. And uh, the low layer is actually a Hacinto system. It's mainly responsible for campus communication with the central gateway. And uh, between HVO Intel and HVO Hacinto systems, they use the QNet for IPC communication. And uh, after we uh, reverse engineering the firmware, uh, we identified some uh, vehicle services which are running in the HVO Intel system and uh, like diagnosis service, navigation update service, and the BMW connected drive service. And these service, uh, services can interact with the outside via some common interfaces, including uh, USB port, OBD port, and the 3G network. And in next slides, I will analyze the uh, vulnerabilities in these services case by case and uh, introduce how to control HVO Hacinto system to send the CAM messages onto the KCAM bus. And when we started to research MBT uh, head unit, the first question is how to access the internal network. Uh, because for MBT head unit, uh, the Wi-Fi interface is disabled, but we found a USB config file in the actual Intel system. Uh, this, uh, uh, this config file can enable USB Ethernet interface and uh, set up an Ethernet network in the system. Uh, so if you're plugging a specific USB to Ethernet uh, adapter, like a D-Link USB dongle, uh, the HVO Intel system will be assigned a static IP address. Uh, then you can uh, connect to the internal network of the system. And then we try to scan the TCP and the UDV ports. 
And the scanning result shows that the HU Intel system has no firewall filtering rules applied on the USB Ethernet interface, and leading to many uh, internal services are exposed. And these exposed services are new attack entries to the system. Uh, for, for instance, a diagnosis service is running on TCP port 6801. And actually, uh, this diagnosis service running in the HVO Intel system is used to uh, diagnose and reconfigure NBT uh, head unit. And there's a dedicated uh, BMW diagnostic tool uh, for the communication with this service, which is called Toolset. And uh, the service internally uh, implements a custom uh, UDS protocol. The, communi uh, the communication data between the service and uh, the diagnostic tool is also based on a customized protocol packet. And uh, with regard to the protocol packet, uh, it's comprised the packet header and the packet body. Uh, the orange area in the header uh, indicates the packet body size, and uh, the green area in packet body uh, is the source ECU address, and the blue area uh, is the destination uh, ECU address. And for standard UDS payload, uh, it's saved uh, in the uh, red area in the packet body. And after some uh, reverse engineering work, uh, we found there's uh, uh, an, uh, an interesting uh, UDS diagnostic job, uh, which would uh, receive batch script uh, from the diagnostic tool and uh, then write the batch, uh, batch script into the HU Intel file system. And the job uh, then will uh, execute the batch script for MPD head unit reconfiguration. Uh, but in fact, uh, the batch script is signed by a private key. Before executing the batch script, uh, the collector signature data should be sent to the service uh, for digital verification. So if you cannot get a private key, uh, it's impossible to achieve the service into executing some uh, modified batch script. Uh, but uh, this diagnosis service uh, is multi-threading. Uh, when two concurrent threads are accessing the same batch script uh, at the same moment, uh, there's no uh, thread safe protections uh, like a thread lock, uh, so it leads to a classic uh, talk to risk condition vulnerability. And uh, in order to uh, exploit such a vulnerability, uh, we need to create two concurrent threads uh, for communicating with this service. Uh, one is target thread, uh, it will send a normal request, and another is race thread, it will uh, send a malicious request. Uh, when the target thread is verifying the batch script in memory uh, with correct signature, the race thread is always trying to uh, rewrite the batch script in file system. Uh, but the dark thread is always thinking uh, the batch script in file system is never be, uh, is never be modified uh, during verification. Uh, so, uh, after successful verification, the dark thread would execute the best script, uh, but the best script has been modified by this thread. So by this way, uh, we were able to uh, execute arbitrary batch commands in the HVO Intel system with root privileges. And uh, there are two ways to deliver the exploit. Uh, simply, uh, we can exploit the list service uh, through a USB uh, to Ethernet adapter. Uh, besides, uh, on a BMW car, an OBD Ethernet cable can also uh, set up an Ethernet connection uh, to the HVO Intel system. Uh, so uh, this point can also be delivered to the, uh, the service uh, through Ethernet over OBD port. And uh, after we uh, got to load the show uh, from HVO Intel system, uh, from, uh, from this picture we can see that uh, HVO Intel and the HVO Hacinto system are in, uh, just are in the same queue net, uh, networking. And the next vulnerability was in the navigation map update service. This service continuously monitors the USB ports on NBT head unit. And if a USB stick is plugged in, the service would try to uh, search and analyze an update config file uh, from USB stick which is called manage UPD.nzdf. Uh, this updated config file keeps the information about the complex map files for navigation update. Uh, when navigation update started, uh, the service would try to uh, decompress map files from uh, USB stick into the HVO Intel system. 
And uh, before navigation update the service uh, decompresses a map file from USB stick, it need to pass the update config file and uh, extract uh, a, a map file name for decompression. And from the right code snippet, we can see that uh, the service uh, uses sprintf function to construct an absolute file path uh, with a map file name. And this map file name is uh, retrieved from the updated config file. And the worst thing is there's no band check, on, uh, band check on the file name buffer, which is allocated on the stack. So uh, if the map file name in the updated config file could be modified with more than 1024 bytes, uh, the file name stack buffer would be overflowed. And uh, uh, in fact, this update config file is not digitally signed, so we, we, we can directly modify its content. Uh, then we crafted this update config file by putting uh, numerous bytes into the field of the map file name uh, in this update config file. And as a result, the stack buffer overflow will be triggered uh, during navigation map update. And besides, the service process has no stack canary protection, and the ASLR is not enabled in the QNS operating system. So it's trivial to control the EIP register. And uh, using the RP, uh, we successfully uh, exploit this stack buffer overflow and uh, achieve the code execution in the HVO Intel system with root privileges. And then, uh, another attractive feature in NBT head unit uh, is connective drive service. Uh, with the telematic communication box, uh, the connective drive service can provide the user with telematic and uh, online functions, uh, like uh, real-time traffic information, online news, and uh, online weather. Um, and besides, on, in China, if you bought a new BMW car, it's worth free to use this service about three years. And after uh, we reverse engineering the connected drive service, uh, we found this uh, provisioning profile, which is used to configure this service. And in, in, in this profile, uh, it defines the backend URL uh, of the online functions. And uh, in this picture, it's a URL for the online news function. And uh, it's used as HTTPS, uh, which seems to be secure. And uh, by analyzing the traffic between the service and the backend server, uh, we found that the service would send, uh, uh, send periodic request to the backend server. And if the backend server responds to some uh, correct data, the service would try to, uh, to try to download a new profile uh, from the backend server to reconfigure the, re the service. And in this picture, uh, it, uh, we can see that the service send uh, HTTP request to the, to the backend server to download a new profile uh, through the HTTP policy. And uh, besides the new downloaded profile, it's just uh, uh, validated by MD5 algorithm. Uh, so obviously, this is really a security issue. Uh, if, you could, uh, uh, if you could intercept HTTP traffic, uh, then you could hijack functions of the connected drive service. Uh, but in fact, in, uh, in NBD head unit, uh, connected drive service and uh, provisioning update just uh, uh, works under the 3G and 2G networks. So in order to intercept the GPS traffic, uh, we need to use uh, USRP and open BTS to uh, set up a fake GSM-based station. And once we uh, force the telematic communication uh, to connect to our uh, fake GSM-based station, uh, then we can remotely trigger the provisioning update and uh, deploy the, a new modified profile to the service. And in this mod, uh, modified profile, uh, the online news URL has been changed uh, from HTTPS to HTTP uh, so that we can do a main, a main in the middle attack against the online news function. And actually, uh, the online news function in MBT head unit uh, is processed by an in car browser uh, in the system, which is called a different control browser. And for security purposes, the different control browser is running as a low privileged browser user in the system, uh, which is UID is eight. 
And since we have, we, we have modified the, the online news URL with HTTP uh, so that we can manipulate HTTP uh, traffic in our fake base station. And according to the browser uh, user agent, we knew that uh, the different control browser is based on a uh, WebKit engine. And we also found the uh, corresponding WebKit library in a system, uh, which is customized by Harmon uh, for QNS operating system. And this web, uh, WebKit library was really out of date, and it had many public uh, and uh, exploitable vulnerabilities. And finally, uh, we exploited this different control browser uh, by a uh, use of the free vulnerability in the sort function of this array object uh, in the WebKit engine. Uh, actually, it was the same vulnerabilities. Uh, it, it was the same vulnerability we used to exploit the Tesla in car browser in the year two thousand in the year two thousand sixteen. And basically, two of the exploitations are similar, but in this case, here are some points that should be noted. Uh, in the different control browser, all the JavaScript objects are allocated on the QNS system heap memory. Uh, so we need some knowledge about the QNS heap memory management. Uh, and uh, in the different control browser, there's no JIT. So there's also no uh, writable buffer for the show code execution. And in order to uh, achieve the code execution, we modified the function point of str2l uh, in the GOT segment with the system function address, and then uh, invoke the JavaScript data function to trigger the system function in the, uh, internally. Uh, and for more exploitation details, you can uh, check out our web paper, uh, which will be released on the Red Hat website. As mentioned before, the different control browser is running as a, as a browser user. So uh, that is just uh, allowed us to get a, a low privileged browser shell. Uh, but the different control browser has no uh, browser sandbox protection. Uh, and it has the ability to access the TCP network. Uh, so uh, we can uh, leverage the talk to risk condition vulnerability in the diagnosis service to get the root privileges from this browser shell. And after we got to look at access on the HU Intel system, the next step is how to uh, send arbitrary CAN messages onto the KCAN bus. Uh, because HU Intel and the HU Hass Intel system are in the same QNet, and luckily uh, we found there's no password protection in the QNet network, so uh, we can directly log into HU Intel system uh, with root privileges. And the HU Intel system is responsible for CAN bus communication uh, with the central gateway. Uh, so then we uh, reverse engineering the corresponding CAN bus driver, and then we found this CAN transmit function, uh, which is used to send the local messages. Uh, so in the end, we uh, hooked this CAN transmit function to send the CAN messages with uh, arbitrary CAN ID and arbitrary CAN data onto the KCAN bus. So in next part, uh, Wen Kai will uh, introduce how to remotely uh, exploit the telematic communication box. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, actually, this part should be uh, is supposed to be finished uh, talked by uh, one of an, another college. Uh, he's Ao Hui Wang, but he cannot come here for some visa problem. So I will talk uh, talk this uh, section uh, instead of him. And uh, actually, TCB, um, the exploit of the TCB is a very important part in our explo uh, exploration. Uh, it helps us to make, uh, finally make a uh, uh, remote, uh, remote attack. Uh, let's talk about some the details of the TCB. And uh, there's two parts in the TCB. The first part is uh, uh, from Qualcomm's Rex RTOS, and the next part is an AutoSAR OS that's uh, MCU to uh, communication with the CAN bus. And uh, uh, in the when we try to reverse the uh, RTOS, we find that there's a lot of tasks in the TCB uh, in the Rack OS. So we mainly focus on such kinds of uh, these kinds of uh, this um, task. The first of all is about the NGTP. It's a BMW developed protocol. It's a very important part. And another thing is the SMS client and also remote service and the last day call. And also there's a provisioning update. And uh, all the details I will talk about later. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, the NGTP. Uh, when we try to reverse, we find that uh, uh, the, uh, because BMW car has a remote uh, services, you can uh, use it to um, unlock the door and uh, do something else. So, and also you can trigger the provisioning update. It's uh, like uh, to update the configuration in the T uh, TCB. And so, uh, after we uh, released uh, our white paper, then we find uh, there's uh, actually there's uh, uh, a team from the, um, by the a a ADAC. They have uh, also a solid works um, about the NGTP. And but the difference uh, the difference is at that time they had to um, they find a problem that the BMW used the HTTP. But at this time we had to face HTTPS. We had to, uh, had to find something to. Um, uh, to bypass the HTTPS protection. Um, first of all, it, uh, we, try, uh, we should to, uh, recover the NGTP messages. It's the use ASN1 encoding, and also it's encrypted. But uh, fortunately, um, we find that uh, there are uh, hard code encryption keys, so we can use this and uh, buy a lot of reverse, and uh, that's finished by our way one. That's very cool. And uh, finally, we can decode the messages, and when you try to snipe the messages so, uh, to the TCB, then we can decode it, and also we can encode it. And that's the, that's the normal uh, trigger process of the, uh, uh, the NGTP use. First of all, um, when the car is shut down, and the only the TCB is awake, so uh, when you try to use the app to uh, like unlock the door, uh, first of all, it will send a message to the TCB and uh, tell the TCB, let's wake the car. And then the TCB will uh, make a HTTPS connection to the server, and uh, they will transfer another NGTP messages and uh, to, uh, for example, to do the unlock the door and something else. So, uh, in this kind, uh, so in this picture, we can see there's, uh, it seems there's no problem because um, the communication is protected by the, uh, by the HTTPS. But we think, uh, we find that uh, BMW used the NGTP to trick the remote services, also to wake the car. What about we send another messages with another kinds of NGTP message to let the car unlock the door? And we success. We only uh, we find that the SMS and not there's no protection. So first of all, you use the SMS to tell the car let's wake up, and then uh, tell the car let's unlock the door. Then the, all the thing has worked. At this time, we can uh, use the SMS to let the car unlock and do something else. But, uh, and also in the NGTV, there are some key points. The first of all is about the VIN code. You should know the VIN code of the car. And also, you should build a fake GSM base station. And at this time, uh, use NGTV, you can only uh, unlock the door climate control, and you cannot do something else. And then it's about the provisioning update. It's uh, like a configuration uh, update in this part. Uh, actually, this configuration file is um, protected by the sign and uh, protected by a lot of things. There's enough check. But finally, we found one to check the signature. There's a buffer overflow. By using this buffer overflow, finally we can make the code execution in the TCB, in the RTOS. But as I mentioned above, uh, the first part of the TCB is the rack OS, and then there's a, can, uh, there's a MCU, and then finally that's the CAN. So if you can compromise the uh, rack OS, you can compromise the RTOS, you cannot send any message to the CAN. So you should still find uh, you should find some some way to uh, bypass the MCU to let it uh, send a message, but we find another way because we, uh, there's another function called the last day call. It's it's like some kinds of UDS diagnostic remotely uh, to the car. So and there's a configuration file in the TCB uh, in the rack OS. Uh, you, you can see um, there's some in that file, uh, you know, define the, the UDS messages and something else. And the MC will help the Rack OS to send the UDS message to the CAN. So at this time, uh, now we can control the, uh, now we can let the TCB send any UDS message we want. And how to make the final exploit, I will talk about later. And at this time, we just uh, use the last day call 
to let the TCP send the UDS message. And then about how to attack the ECUs behind the gateway. Uh, you can see, um, we can uh, go back to see the uh, architecture of the car. Uh, there's domain isolation. If you can compromise the head unit, compromise the TCP I mentioned about, uh, you cannot influence the whole car. You can only influence the uh, ECUs on the maybe the KCAM4 as the information domain. And uh, there's uh, less ECU on the information domain. Um, let's see some details because um, there's less ECUs on the infotainment, uh, infotainment domain and also uh, you cannot make too many uh, effect or some inference to the car just uh, by sending any message on the KCAM4. So we try to find something to break the uh, domain isolation. And we, get our fo uh, we got our focus on two functions. First of all is the diagnostic function from the OBD side. And another uh, function is uh, the in the, it's in the TCBS call we call uh, last day call. Uh, first of all, let's uh, check something of the diagnostic function from the OBD side. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the first, uh, the, uh, the uh, one, by, uh, one byte in the CAN ID, that means the source ECU ID. And also, there's the first byte of the CAN data at the target ECU ID. If we, uh, we just uh, use some sniffing and uh, when we try to uh, do the diagnostic to the car, actually you can, uh, if you have tried to modify your BMW car or something else, you can download some diagnostic uh, software from uh, online. And we, uh, we just uh, try to uh, snipe the CAM messages and we find that this, uh, this kind of format of the diagnostic uh, package. For example, the normal diagnostic screen is like uh, uh, 6F5. F5 means uh, the tester from the OBD side. And 6.1 means that that's the ID of the TCB. But when we try to reverse the, how uh, we reverse the IDs and the reverse the, the direction of the CAN, uh, we send the CAN message through the K CAN4. And also we would reverse the ID. Um, for example, we just uh, uh, see, uh, say our source ID is the 6.1, that's the T-box. And also the target ID is the F5, that's the OBD side. Then, very interesting, uh, we, we found that the gateway can transfer the message through the OBD side. It can also transfer the message through another CAN and include the KCAN, that's the infotainment domain. At this moment, uh, you can see the picture, that's the picture of the uh, ECS, that's the diagnostic software from BMW and the uh, uh, you can get the can, uh, you can get the ECU ID through that uh, software, and now everything seems to work. We can uh, use this function to let the uh, let the gateway helper to transfer the messages through the infotainment domain. But uh, we can only send these messages through the head unit. Uh, as I mentioned above, that we. Uh, uh, we should finish the remote attack. The remote attack we should start it from the we should start from the TCB. And the TCB you cannot send any messages. So we put our focus on the another kind of uh, function in the TCB. Uh, uh, its name is last day call. And actually, the last day call is use uh, a routine control function in the BDC. It's very similar to the OBD diagnostic format. It's used that routine control function to help to let the gateway to send the messages to the other can, to transfer the message. So let's talk. Uh, so at this time, we just modified the uh, UDS configuration files in the TCB, and the TCB will help uh, to send the message we uh, construct. And uh, also, the gateway will help uh, to use the last day call function to send the message to the other cans. At this time, uh, we can finally um, get a code execution in the TCB and also code execution in the NBT and the head, the head unit. And then we can let them send the UDS messages and let the um, gateway help uh, to transfer the UDS messages. Uh, first of all, is uh, uh, now we can see at some of, 
uh, at some of time, uh, we can let the cybersecurity to the functional safety because uh, you can see that's a very normal UDS diagnostic uh, message. When you try to combine to, them together, you can influence the car. Uh, actually, uh, there's another diagnostic for, uh, the software you can download online, and uh, there's a lot of diagnostic function you can find in the you can find in the software, and. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things you can you can just uh, diagnose the whole car and uh, you uh, just uh, get the message by uh, snipe to the can, and you can get different kinds of uh, UDS messages. Uh, then, for example, uh, I just uh, give you some example, and uh, you can combine together. For example, you can use the uh, reset issues. Also, you can tr uh, try to change the driver's seat position, and uh, and something else. You can just uh, combine the UDS uh, together and uh, lead the cybersecurity problem to the finally the functional problem. So, in conclusion, uh, we can route the head unit through the USB side and OBD side, and also fake GSM base station. Uh, then we can route the head unit. And also, we can trick the uh, the normal function of the BMW remote reverse service uh, used by the, some problem in the NGTP of SMS. Then we also find a bug to uh, to trick uh, to finally finish the uh, code execution in the TCB. And then we can send any CAM messages or UDS messages through the, the MBT, uh, the head unit, or the TCB to the KCAM process to uh, the KCAM four. And then use the function uh, which is implemented by in the uh, in the gateway to help uh, to transfer the UDS message to the other cans to the other issues. And finally, we can get uh, we can influence the other issues uh, in uh, uh, to finish our final attack. And then will be a very interesting topic that's from BMW side, and they they will talk about how how the um, uh, response to our report after they receive the uh, report and uh, how they uh, fix some of the problem uh, in detail. And uh, that's very interesting. Thanks. So one and a half years ago, I wanted to be on a skiing trip with friends. Actually, where I was was the hospital. I was in hospital together with my wife who had just given birth to my son. That was when I received a text message from my boss. And my boss wrote, Hendrik, we received a report from Keen Security Lab, and I knew this was going to be interesting. <laughs> However, I would never have imagined to end up here on stage with you guys. So, um, as you have seen, As you have seen, Keen Security Lab spent a tremendous amount of research um, on BMW cars between 2017 and 2018. Now, uh, I want to give you uh, a little insight on what we did at BMW. So, we received the report from Keen Security Lab in February uh, 2018. Um, we have immediately uh, dived into the vulnerabilities to confirm the vulnerabilities on the different uh, modules. And uh, we have then started to develop countermeasures, mitigations, and bug fixes for our cars. We have confirmed them um, on a test fleet and have then rolled it out to the whole BMW fleet in summer 2018. So what happens there? Basically, first of all, you need security experts. You need security experts to validate and analyze the results. So hackers like you and me. Then you need experts for the different functions that are affected. In this case, connected drive. You need experts for the car side and you need experts for the backend side. And what you can see here at that picture is actually uh, one of our cars inside an EMC hall. EMC is basically for conformance testing, that's a Faraday cage. So we set up our rogue base station in that cage of the colleagues that we asked for permission there. Because, of course, you don't want to have a rogue GSM base station um, out in the wild. 
then we took our local development centers um, into the project because you have different configurations and you have different infrastructure depending on the region and the world where the car is operated. We have different connected drive hubs there and we do have different mobile service operators, for example, for the cars. And then, of course, we had to take our suppliers um, into the project, the suppliers of the head unit devices, of the navigation devices, suppliers of the telematics devices, and also the suppliers of the gateway modules. And that for all the generations that we had assessed and that were affected here. Last but not least, corporate quality. So basically, our contact to the dealerships around the world, so we notified them about um, the bug fixes and patches uh, and how to roll that out to the vehicles for those that uh, needed physical contact to the vehicle. So um, let me go into a little more detail here. I already um, mentioned the report that we received from Keen Security Lab. That was really outstanding work. So that was very detailed. We received proof of concept, so it was, a, um, was great to work with that. Um, and Keen Security Lab, you know, they're white hat hackers, so they, they had four white cars here, um, and they gave us real results on that. Um, so we boiled that basically down to two different generations that we had to look, look at in the navigation systems and the telematics units. Um, but then, if you think of how many cars we built and how many cars we developed, what, what do you think how many similar build-to-order cars out of the two million cars we produce in a year would there be? Basically, not even a handful. So we had many cars and many different uh, configurations that we wanted to look at. Different options for different configurations, different regional uh, configurations, different generations of control units and different combinations of those control units. And that's um, how we dived into it. So to give you one example, you have seen the buffer overflow in the provisioning of connected drive, right? So that was one telematics unit that was affected with this bug, and that was limited to actually one of the connected drive hubs, um, in this case in China, where we had an additional misconfiguration, so we had an HTTP URL instead of the HTTPS URL inside. So in that case, it was exploitable. How did we um, address that? We addressed that with an over-the-air reconfiguration. So we moved from HTTP to HTTPS um, by contacting the cars and giving them a new configuration. So um, we reached all of the cars, 86% uh, of the cars in the first attempt. Um, and then we tried again for a couple of times and uh, after the first um, retry, uh, after the fourth retry, we had a success rate of 96%. So the rest, the 4%, are basically cars that are not connected anymore. Um, for example, they're salvaged. As Henry mentioned before, um, he got the text message when he was in the hospital with his wife and his newborn. So we had to find somebody else to get onto this topic quickly. As I had still his skis in my office, we had, which he had left there, when he had to run to the hospital. I also took over the responsibility for the incident um, response project, which actually became one of the most interesting ones I've done within BMW so far. But there was another reason for me to take over the responsibility for this project, because I had been part of the team that developed the connected drive and telematics functions in the control units we are actually talking about today. So I had the deep knowledge about the hows and whys to come up with the right countermeasures. So let's get into those. I will show you now in detail one of the countermeasures that we developed and rolled out. I'm using the attack against the remote door unlock as shown by Keen Security Lab just a couple of minutes before. To get into this, um, we will have a look at the flow again. But for us, the most important question was, how do we come up with a countermeasure that we can roll out as quickly as possible um, best of all, to roll it out over the air so our customers get the improvement as quickly as possible without any activity on their side. So when we look at the remote service flow, the customer has a smartphone with a BMW connected app on it. When he executes the service, it sends a command 
to our backend server. The server then sends the SMS to our cars to wake it up with the NGTP protocol. After that, the flow is designed in a way that it's doing an HTTPS request to the backend to ask for the actual command to be executed. Yeah, all of those messages are NGTP messages. And then an important part comes. The car is checking then the already mentioned provisioning file. Within this provisioning file, there are not only technical parameters telling which URL to contact, but also it tells which services the customer has subscribed to. So in this case, the customer has subscribed to the services remote door unlock. So the car checks the provisioning, says it's okay. It will unlock the door. Um, and um, sends a command back to the uh, BMW server. The customer gets a notification on his smartphone and knows everything worked fine. So how then does the attack work? So they set up a rogue base station, trap the car into their own 2G network, sends the wake-up SMS, which they're capable of doing so because they reverse engineered the protocol and they also extracted the pre-shared key to with which were part of the software. And then instead of having the car pulling the command via HTTPS, now they send the same message again. Unfortunately, one of our configurations inside the, the field accepted this SMS, not all of the co configurations did. It checks the provisioning and executes the service. So we thought, how can we come up with a countermeasure to prevent this? And provisioning was already mentioned before, we are also capable of providing new configurations to our car while they are uh, in operation. So we said, let's just reconfigure our cars outside the affected ones to turn the service off via provisioning. So we did that with all the fleet. So what happens now when the attacker is coming? They send the SMS again, but the car is validating those against the configuration inside, saying, okay, the service is not allowed to run, and so the attack doesn't work any longer. But it has a drawback. The customer still wants to use the service, so we have to find a way of enabling it for him. What do we come up? We change our, our configuration flow within our connected drive backend without any changes within the car. So when the customer is now executing the service, instead of directly sending the SMS to wake it up, we send another command to download a new configuration temporarily. This comes also to the car via SMS, and then it's fetching this configuration via the HTTPS connection, but in this case, this is only possible um, via HTTPS, not via SMS, because the payload is so much bigger. So then, temporarily, the service is turned on inside the car. We then operate the normal remote execute uh, path we did before, so it's coming down the message, checking provisioning, executing the service, sending the command back. And then we clean up, so to speak. So we set the car back to the um, secure configuration by reprovisioning it once again and turning all the services off again so the attack won't work any longer. So just to give you an idea on what we do for security, we don't only address this internally, so we have teams of hackers, penetration testing, incident management, but also um, everywhere in the development. But also, um, we have a website that you can report security research to. So if you go to our website, bmwgroup.com, you go to contact, and then you go to security, you will find an email address and you will find a PGP key that you can use to encrypt. So you can address uh, your security research on the car but also on corporate IT issues to this email address. And we're also very active um, in other parts. So for example, uh, we brought the secure onboard communication protocol into AutoSAR, and we're active in Auto ISAC, which is basically um, an association with the OEMs and the tier ones, where we discuss vulnerabilities to learn from them. And then there's ISO and SAE, um, who just develop a standard on how to bring security into the engineering process for embedded um, automotive. So, what are the key takeaways for you today? First of all, um, automotive is a very, very complex business. You have seen the different configurations, the different regional um, configurations even. 
different options, different regional configurations. You have seen the different life cycles, uh, the long life cycle of the product. Then you've seen over-the-air updates are essential. This is vital to address security um, in a very, very fast manner. Then the automotive industry is changing. And this is not only the OEMs, the manufacturers, there's also the suppliers. This has to go through the whole supply chain. Um, and security is becoming a, um, an essential part in development and then also in operations. So when the car is on the road. And then as a last point, responsible disclosure is the key also in the automotive world to make the, the product more secure. And we want to thank you for being responsible and uh, disclosing that to us. Um, so that we could be on stage here together. Thank you.